Hey guys, Mike from B Tech Reviews here, and today we take a look at the 2024 Nissan Versa SR. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So if you guys follow my channel, you guys know in the past I've done some videos uh, on vehicles. In this case, I purchased a brand new 2024 Nissan Versa SR edition, which is probably the smallest car you can get from the Nissan lineup as far as a, an actual car. Uh, and, um, you know, again, this is probably might be the last model year of the 2024 or the, the Versa in general, so I decided to get the top trim just because, you know, I kind of like to have all the bells and whistles. But as you can see there, uh, it's got the little SR badging. Let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit there for you. Uh, we'll do a walk around of the vehicle and then we'll show you guys the inside. So here is the front fascia. It looks pretty nice. It's It looks kind of sporty. Uh, the front does have LED headlights and this little LED, like, I guess, daytime running light. I don't have it on right now, but it looks pretty cool at night. Uh, on the side here, you can see here that it has 17-inch uh, alloy wheels. It's got pretty nice uh, rims on it. You know, it's got kind of like a silver metallic uh, with a black accent on the inside, so it doesn't really look bad. As you can see here, it does have uh, Continental uh, tires, which is probably like... I've never had Conti, Conti tires on here, so the, the, uh, from what I know, it's a pretty good brand. Here you guys can see the size. It's 205. Uh, 50 uh, R17 so that's gonna be the tire width right here as you can see here on the side you do have uh, the uh, side mirrors in black so you kind of have like the two-tone accent uh, on the car a little bit not too too much we'll, we'll continue to see the theme once we get onto the inside I kind of wish that they maybe had it like did a two-tone top up here but I guess not or maybe like uh, at least black door handles to kind of go with it uh, I did get the car yesterday so it is a little bit dirty because uh, it was raining when I bought the car, so just a heads up, guys. Uh, but if you can see here, we're going all the way around the vehicle, right? I, my my tires are there; they look dirty because I've been driving through puddles all day. As you can see here, uh, the back does have the SR badging. It does have like a little lip spoiler, which if you can see that, you know it's pretty nice, honestly. Like you know, it looks a lot better with it than without it. But you know, if you get like the SV or the base trim, you're not going to complain too hard. On the bottom, you do have. You know your little rear diffuser on the back on the bumper with with the faux carbon fiber uh, accents which you know um, and you have the reflectors down here they're kind of hard to see and if we get down even further you can see the little exhaust tip which it's not you know it's actually kind of sharp looking but it doesn't stick out to any extent i wish nissan uh would you know at least throw in a fake exhaust tip you know uh, down here you do have backup sensors which you know uh, for the blind spot monitoring and the uh the the back itself as you can see here it's actually got a pretty lengthy uh size trunk this is actually one of the bigger size trunks i've seen in uh, vehicles like regular cars and i'm talking about like bigger than full size vehicles I, can, I don't i can't give you the the uh exact numbers here but i can tell you like you can probably fit about like six cases of water stacked back here with a couple cases of soda probably no problem, and you can put the seats forward down. So let's get that closed up here for you guys. Again, this is the Versa, so I did have the option of getting the Sentra, but uh, I didn't need the longer wheelbase on the Sentra, even though it's nice. Uh, my mom has a Sentra SV, so I just decided to not go with it right now. The windows are not tinted, but I am going to get the windows tinted uh, this coming Monday. So I plan to, guys, I plan to post this video on both my channel, uh, the B Tech channel, and the uh, Toyota Tech channel. So if you guys don't know, I have two channels. I do have one just for vehicles uh, itself. Let's take a look at the back seat here. So on the side here, as you can see, it does have a speaker, obviously. It does have a cup holder. It, again, that faux uh, carbon fiber uh, trim which is just hard plastic. I guess they just kind of make it look. It does have nice little leather padding here, although it's not very soft to the touch. Um, so passengers are probably not going to have a comfortable time putting their arm on there. That's okay, because uh, I really don't plan to drive people around. As you can see here, it does have nice uh, material as far as uh, you know the back seat goes. It's not leather on the in the front or the back, but it's a very nice stitching. There's the button for for this um, as far as the headrests go they are not removable so in most cars you can get these removed or, or at least pull them up or down but in this car it's just they're just a part of the seat so nothing really too bad with that it does have the three-way uh, seat belts as you can see that there 
nice clean carpet. It does have a USB type C uh, port for you know the passengers, not a USB A. I really wish there would be a USB A and C port, but I guess they're kind of going in that direction with the actual. And again, it's not really that bad. Like me, like if I were to sit back here, ugh, like I'm about five nine. See if I can. I'm about five nine, and I have plenty of leg room. You can see here that you know headroom wise, um, you know my head is probably maybe like three inches from touching the ceiling. So. Unless you hit like a really nasty bump, you're not really going to feel it that much. Um, but for the most part, the seats are pretty comfortable. There is no center console for the back. I would assume maybe it's in the SV trim possibly. Uh, since this is, this is the sports trim, it's going to be a little bit... Uh, you're going to see less items like that. No back pocket here. And you do have chrome handle, uh, I guess, door handles. So that's really not that bad. As you can see here, it also has, um, you know, one of the, uh, you know, you have to open the, the gas lids from the, from the front. So let's go ahead and show you guys the front really quick. And before we get into the front, let me show you guys the key fob. So just so you guys know, and I might get into this in another video, maybe on the other channel. But this is the uh, new key, key fob for the 2024 Nissan Versa SR. I, I'm assuming that they're going to be using this key fob for... For a lot of the uh you know a lot of the makes going forward but you basically have your basic stuff but it does have auto start from the key fob itself but it also has an app that you can download called nissan connect that where you can actually turn the vehicle on from the app and turn it off etc you can turn the horn on you can turn the lights on uh just and let me see if i can turn the lights on just before we get in uh so we can show you guys over here because i really do want to kind of show you guys uh that that little feature i think it's a pretty cool feature so so we get into the nissan connect app you can see here that, that there's a few features there i'm going to put lights let's see what happens let's see what happens let's see if it turns on the light so you can see here the lights were off let's see if it says lights felt to activate for your 2024 so i did get a light failure activation maybe it's because the doors are open hold on let me let me close the door really quick let me close the door Let's try again. It says contacting Nissan lights. It says the door was open, so it gave me a little signal that the door was open. And I did get another push notification. Let me lock the doors, hold on, really quick, one second. Let me lock the doors. Let me see if it's because the lights are off, maybe. Let's try this again. And I think it's a pretty cool feature. You can turn the car on. Let's try again. I haven't actually tried doing the lights, but connecting to Nissan Versa sedan act on Okay, I'm getting the lights filled. Let me see if I can turn the engine on at least. Hold on, let's see if we can turn the... It says, action will remotely start your vehicle. Let's press yes. Let's see if it does that. It says, waking Versa. There you go. So you can actually just turn on your car from the app. So it does do that at least. So do you love the app? I'm going to put yes. Okay, it says, we appreciate your feedback. So it doesn't turn on the lights, but it'll, it'll turn on the, the lamp. But you can see here it does have like a little side mirror. Whatever, let's go ahead and get inside the car, guys, just so you guys can kind of see, get that AC going. Um, okay, sorry, I do have, we'll get we'll get into the radio a little bit, in a little bit. So, let's get into the vehicle here. So, as you can see here, first person view, right, let's go ahead and get the car turned on. So, right now, I, I had remote started it, but you still have to actually press the, the key button to get the car on. So right now, currently, uh, we are in the driver's seat. As you can see here, the steering wheel is a nice little leather. It's a nice little, like, I don't know if it's fake leather or real leather, but it's a, it's a very nice material. It's nice and grippy. Uh, some of the cars that have leather uh, steering wheels, they have like a softer material. I'm not a fan of those. I actually like the ones that are a little bit grippier like this. You can see the, the accent there. And I like the red red accent. As you can see here also, the seats, uh, they're, they're bolstered pretty nice, honestly. It's got like a nice little uh, material here. That looks a little stripe in the middle and you have the red accents on the side so these are actually heated seats guys so let me show you guys really quick if i can find that for you here we go so you actually do have two uh two uh, layers heated seats we have automatic climate control and we do have an eight inch uh screen for the nissan connect so if i click the home button 
this is what the home button is going to look like. Uh, you know, you have your phone connections, audio, your connections down there, and your settings. So this just, you know, again, it's for once you get your phone hooked up. So if you get the SV model, this is actually going to be a 7-inch screen. Again, keep in mind, this is the SR model, guys. Um, so keep that in mind. You know, you get a little bit of a bigger screen over here. Uh, on that end so we'll go we're, we're probably gonna go over that in another video but i just kind of want to show you guys the basics here's the gauge cluster also you know again you can actually change this uh to you know your your trip settings let me see if i can zoom in there just a little bit there you go so you can actually change so so it does have like a half and half um uh i guess gauge cluster which i'm really not a fan of this this one looks like it came out of the nissan kicks and they just cut it in half. It's a really basic gauge cluster on this side. But then on this side, you have like, um, you know, you have, you know, your RPM. So if I were to press on the gas, you know, <laughs> this car, you know, the engine doesn't sound amazing. Honestly, if I can be 100% honest, it does say it does share the same engine with the Nissan Kicks. Um, but anyways, you know, you can change the gauge cu cluster. You can change it to the music. You can change it to the average amount, average uh, mile per gallon that you're getting um you know your mile per hour etc like that and then of course your settings so it does have a lot of uh security settings you know a, a lot to do it, it can show you your your tire sensor pressure or tire pressure sensors you know so um you know again let's go back to the interior really quick guys so just so you can see you know you do have your your automatic adjustable mirrors on here you only do have an automatic uh left or mirror on the driver's side the rest of them are just going to be you're just going to have to hold them down again you know, you still have that little aluminum door handle or I guess chrome, whatever you want to call it. You know, again, you do have this, you know, this textured uh, leather uh, elbow rest. Although, again, it's not very soft. It's not very padded. I think, you know, if I can give Nissan some feedback, maybe put a little more padding towards the end than over here. Because it's like when you're driving, you're not going to put your elbow up here. You're going to have your elbow towards the back where my elbow is sitting, right? Again, I, you know, I, I would say I'm an average size guy. So there's that, you know, this is going to be hard plastic all the way around, of course. I, I don't know if you guys noticed, but it does have like this little cut here in the mirror where probably most cars will have the side mirror like in this little section right here. But I guess they want to give you more, I guess, more to see out of the window or I just more, more viewership from your eyes. Uh, I, forget, I forget the term anyways. Let's go here. So again, you can see here it does have, uh, you know, your your hazard buttons right here. It'll give you your information as far as your passenger airbag, etc., like that. Uh, your AC vents, you know, you only you only have four AC vents. There is no AC in the back, right? Um, you know, you do have the, the uh, a very like inexpensive glove compartment. You know, in in the videos, from what I've seen, like they made it seem like it wasn't a dent. You know, it's not very. It's I mean, it's a decent sized glove compartment, is what I'm gonna say. You do have that leather accent going from one side to the other over here. It actually accentuates all the way to over here. You know, really not needed. I, I mean, honestly, but, you know, I guess, you know, it, this is a 20, you know, it, depending on the market where you live, it, it, between 20 and 22,000. I actually paid 22,500 for this, uh, not including tax and title, right? I did, I was able to put a couple thousand down. Again, hard touch plastic on the top, right? And, you know, again, I love the flat bottom steering wheel. You do have regular cup holders over here, just two cup holders, but you do have one on the on the doors on each side. So, and you do have a little armrest, although there's no really. I again, I don't know what the point of this cutout is, because your e-brake, even if you were to push it, pull it all the way up, let's go ahead. Even if you were to pull this all the way up, look, a lot of people were complaining about that. So, let's see if I can get a better shot there. There you go. So. As you can see there, Nissan, I don't know what's going on with that, but please do a better job. You know, this should have a full-size, uh, you know, again, little area there because you're basically just wasting the space. And I guess because of this little area for, for that down there, but even then, you could probably still have a little bit of space there. So you have a very small little area when it comes to, like, your storage there, but it's enough to put, like, you know, any little private things you can't really, like females, you wouldn't be able to put a purse there. You do have another USB Type-C port there, although you do have two in the front uh, over here, USB-C and USB-A, and you still have, you know, your little uh, volt wattage here. So cool part about this, even though this is like their cheapest car, right, uh, the SR trim has a, a wireless uh, car pad. So let me, let me go ahead and put my, let me go ahead and put my phone down here. Let's see if it charges. So you see that little light indicator right there? Uh, that little light indicator means that it's charging. Let me see if I can zoom in there just a little bit. 
Sorry, I'm not using my iPhone for this, so it might be a little much, but there you go. You guys, you guys get the gist of it. So this, it, you do have like a little wireless uh, car charger. Again, you get, you get single zone automat automatic, uh, you know, I guess AC. So that's really not bad. It's going to, I'm really going to take advantage of this during the summers and the winter when I want my car to get started. And again, you know, you do have the heated seats. You do have, uh, you know, your AC button on this side, right? As well, if you want to turn it on or off, right? If you want to turn, if you want to turn the fan on, it's a little hot. So if I wanted to turn the fan on higher and get, get off the automatic, I can literally turn it on. Um, again, you know, you do have the Versa floor mats, you know, again, you don't have any type of like <laughs> covers for this car. Like it's very basic, you know, at least my car doesn't have any of these covers on, on the seats, you know, I'm actually surprised it doesn't. I should actually go back and ask like, Hey, is this car supposed to have covers on, on, on the, you know, on the brackets for the seats, just because you don't have any type of auto, auto, automatic, uh, you know, seat, as far as seats go, you have to actually press the button or the little lever down here on the bottom and just pull yourself forward. Now it does have adjustable uh, knobs on the side so you can actually raise or lower the seat up and down. And same thing with the with the back portion, you can move it back and forth if you want it to. Glove compartment, or not glove compartment, but this over here, shout out to myself, um, B-Tech and Toyota Tech over here. Um, again, it's really not that bad as far as uh, uh, the, you know, the mirrors go, although a lot of other reviewers and myself uh, think that th this is a little bit long. Again, my, 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 if I were to have this all the way down, you can see that the viewership or the view is not great. So when you're driving, you're actually going to have to probably lift this up and adjust this. But I can, I can kind of get why because of the angling of the wind, the wind, uh, the windshield. Uh, it's very interesting. It's different. So there's that. Um, again, guys, you know, it's a very small car, right? You know, you, I mean, even though the dash looks kind of like it's long, it's really not. The front end is very small. Um, just so you guys know, this does have only six speakers. It has like two little tweeters up here, one over here, one over here, and then one on each door. Surprisingly, you don't get speakers in the very back. So I wanted to get this on me just so we can see myself, but okay, going back to the car, right? You know, so I, you guys know that I, uh, the, the past couple of years, I'm, I've been driving a, a 20 or 2002 Toyota 4Runner. It's a V6. It doesn't very get good gas mileage. Uh, it's not a clunker. You know, it, it gets me from point A to point B. It's a very reliable vehicle. I've only had to put maybe, a, maybe like, you know, a couple thousand dollars into it as far as maintenance goes over the past. Cause I've had it for maybe four or five years already. I think we bought it pre COVID. So I think we bought it like in mid 2018, maybe early 2019. Uh, but anyways, we've had that car for that long. It has over 300,000 miles on it. And, you know, again, I love the vehicle. Um, I'm going to stay with the vehicle or it's going to be, be passed on to my dad. My dad says he's interested in taking the truck for me. So, so it is going to stay in the family. So you might see videos here or two pop up on the channel when it comes to the 4Runner. Um, I might make, make one final video on the 4Runner just to show you guys like, hey, how reliable it is, et cetera, like that with the mileage on it, et cetera. So again, another video. The reason why I wanted to upgrade vehicles uh, is one, you know, gas prices right you know i don't see them going down anytime soon and i was probably wasting about maybe 160 dollars you know a month on gas uh just on the forerunner i would say minimum of 160 dollars. so i was spending about 40 to 50 dollars a week just to fill up the tank right uh you guys know i do gig work so my gig work requires me to drive so i i ended up uh you know deciding on a small uh, little gas saver like this you know and it's a sporty gas saver right so you know it it looks good to me it looks good um is it the fastest car no this car only has 120 horsepower 114 uh, pounds feet of torque uh in another video maybe we'll show you the engine there's really no point of showing you if you guys want to look at the engine you can google it or whatever but it's a four cylinder i don't i don't think it's a dual dual cam uh it, I, I feel like it's a single cam but anyways it, regardless you know it, uh, it's four cylinder it's got a cvt transmission so um it is what it is. I forgot to tell you guys, this, this shifter actually has a sport mode in the back. So there's a button back here uh, that if you turn it on, you actually get a sport mode. Maybe I'll make I'll do another video about that. But that's just for this specific video. So so I wanted to, to kind of make note of that. There's a lot of little quirks about this vehicle, right? Um, but pretty basic. Like if you guys look up here, you know, the, the, the lights are, are basic as far as that. No LEDs. They're just basic halogen lights. You know, you do have like an SOS 
uh, button up here, like if you were to wreck or something, if you press that button, the light is green, so I don't know, like I'm kind of scared to pu push it any of these days. You know, you do have the oh shit handlebars on all sides over here, so not just like on the passenger side, you have it like on all sides, you know. So if anything happens, the seat belts are adjustable. You know, I might actually have to raise mine a little bit just cause, because, but this, this, I feel like it's a little bit low. I need it to be a little bit higher for me cause it's like definitely a lot higher on the other side. So, but for now, I guess I'll just leave it. I'll leave it as is, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm not super tall, so I just might leave it where it is, but th these side mirror, these side uh, seat belts are a little bit adjustable. So I might do that a little, late, little bit later, but yeah, again, the reason why I wanted to get another vehicle is because I just wanted something more comfortable to drive. Also, you know, I commute a lot to work. Uh, even though I don't commute as much as I did at my last position at my last store that I was working at, cause I work in retail. Um, I'm still driving about, you know, uh, at least 15 miles a day, just commuting, going, going and coming. And, you know, I'm battling traffic a lot of the times in heavy areas and, you know, the truck, even though it's a comfortable ride, again, like I said, it's, it's, it, it does horrible on gas. Um, you know, and I just wouldn't want to spend less money, uh, filling up, uh, on the gas. Hold on, let me release the e-brake over here. Um, so, you know, I wanted to go something that I knew was going to be semi-reliable, uh, you know, a little sporty looking and again, not that expensive and, and really the sub economy compact uh, sector for, for vehicles nowadays are going to disappear. Really the only cars that you see that are in this category are like the Kia, you know, the Kia Rio and the Mitsubishi Mirage. But from what I'm hearing, we might in the next year or so, you might not be seeing small cars like that. So you're really only going to be seeing maybe like you know, mid-size to full-size sedans, if you still see full-size sedans, and mostly just SUVs and crossovers, right? Really, that's where the economy, and of course, you're going to get your sports cars, right? There's always going to be a market for, like, sport and muscle cars and, and you know, uh, you know, just hyper cars in general, right? You know, that, I don't think I'll ever get to that point in my YouTube channel where you, you're going to see me reviewing a hyper car. But, you know, if I can share information with you guys, you know, this is, this is going to be a long-term review, guys, for, for this vehicle. Um, and we'll get that going. But I guess a few more features before we go, and then we'll go ahead and sign off, guys. So if you guys look up here, this, this is actually like a camera. So the front, the front grille actually has a sensor also. And it has radar detection, right? Where, again, I don't know if you guys can see that, but, you know, this this has what's called lane keep assist, right? Uh, so it, when you're on the highway and, you know, you're behind somebody, let's say you have your car on cruise control and you're behind someone. So there, so the car actually has, like, radar sensors that will that will slow the car down. Like, oop, let me get that fixed. Hold on one second. There you go. So it, it, has, uh, it has radar sensors. Uh, that will slow the car down if the car in front of you slows down. Uh, now, of course, I haven't tested it in this car just yet because, like, I've only had the car for 24 hours, so I haven't really been able to drive too much. You guys can even see there, I've only driven it 54 miles. Literally, this is all the car has is 54 miles. I know it looks dusty already, but it's the AC. It's what's coming from the AC. Um, and again, like I said, I was driving in the rain mo uh, all day yesterday. So today, you know, it's the first day I was able to come out and it's nice out. Like it's not raining. It was nice and overcasty today, but not, uh, just nice and rainy today. So but anyways, guys, you know, uh, m maybe on another day I'll do a, a driving impressions video just to kind of get that over, over with, with you guys. Oh, you know what? I did want to, I did want to play. I did want to play music for you guys really quick. So let's see. Hold on. Let me see if I can. Just, just so you guys can see the hear the sound system really quick. So, let's see if I can uh, play some music here for you guys really quick. And this is no copyright sounds. So hopefully I don't get copyrighted over here, guys. NCS sounds. So let's let's go ahead and play. Hold on. We'll go ahead and pause that so this car just again so you guys know it doesn't have there's no subwoofer it really again really only has those four speakers on the side a lot of 
the car YouTubers that I've list that I've been listening to are saying that the sound system sounds crappy. It's not great. I think it sounds amazing for for the price with not ha actually having like an actual sound system. You know, I think the speakers sound great. I don't. I don't. You know, the bass sounds good. Maybe now, now if you crank it up all the way, are you gonna get? Uh, you know, some cracks from the speakers. Yes, you are. So this was, again, that was basically my, my speakers were barely halfway there. Uh, so it really just depends what you're listening to and what you're driving and how fat, what you're driving to. But again, guys, that was really, uh, you know, as far as that, the sound goes or whatever, like, like the sound is very crisp in my opinion. It's very chill. Um, it's nice. And yes, this car, just so you guys know, this car does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. I don't have my phone connected. It doesn't have wireless, but you do have to connect uh, the USB-A or the USB-C to your phone. Uh, and I forgot to pull the cord from my truck. I need to do that. But it does have US, it does have uh, wireless, or I'm sorry, it does have wired Apple CarPlay. So, you know, for navigation purposes, again, I don't have it connected, but, you know, it does have that. So one of these days I'll make a video about the Apple CarPlay, how it looks, et cetera, like that. But anyways, guys. I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. I hope you guys liked the overview of the 2024 Nissan Versa SR. If you guys liked the video, please smash that like button again uh, if you guys watched this far. So again, thanks again for watching. Uh, I really appreciate it. We'll see you guys next time.